hell that he's been going through ever since that event. All right, here we go. I'll do the best I can with this. You ready? <laughs> Safe at home? That place is a death trap. I figured if I just hang, chill out, nothing bad could happen, right? My video game blew out the whole fuse box. My folks had to rewire the whole house. Then I'm making lunch and I somehow put dog food in my taco. So I started gagging and I ended up squirting hot sauce up my nose. But when I go through the sink, I trip over the cat and face plate in the, to in the toilet. I still have dog food breath. So you get the idea. Almost perfect. The director would have been like, mm, let's do it again. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm Henry from Fire Emblem Awakening. Uh, what do you want me to say, Henry? That guy. Oh, yes. Did you write down the confession? I, I remember this one. <laughs> so let me first, who's played Fire Emblem Awakening? I want to. For you guys who haven't, I'll describe my first day of recording as Henry, and then I'll do this line. So I, I go into the studio, and when you record on games like that, they don't tell you what game you're working on. They just use a code name. So you have no idea what you're doing. All they do is show you a picture of the character, and my character, Henry, is smiling and holding a crow, and like laughing, and he's wearing this like cape. So I go, okay, uh, cool. So I jump in the booth, and the director is Patrick Seitz, um, who's such an awesome guy. I want to say that. I'm deeply uh, in love with you. The first line is, yay, blood. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right. And Patrick's like, okay, let's, uh, let's hear what they got for this. And I'm just like, yay, blood. And he goes, okay, Henry's more excited about this than that. <laughs> cool. Yay, blood. Okay, take that, multiply that times a hundred, and then you got Henry. Yay, hey, blood, huh? And that's Henry. <laughs> so here's his confession. If you if you beat the game, I think when you marry him, he says, "I'll love you with every ounce of my blood until I die." Ooh, what do you think that'll be? <laughs> I'm going to start on this side and then just kind of like work my way over. So, go right there. So I'm a big fan of Tales of Grace's F, and I know you're awesome. Asbel I am Asbel Lott. I would like to know if you play any of the video games that you voice acted, because I know you do come by and Dayton Rampa as well, so I'm going to say if you play any of the video games yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I grew up playing RPGs. Um, especially Final Fantasy, like Final Fantasy 1 on Nintendo, and then Final Fantasy 3, which is technically 6, uh, and then Final Fantasy 7, like, played those games He's all the way through. After. after that, I got busy with school, okay, okay. stopped gaming as much, okay. so when I got called like, to do really like game in the so city, I, this is a question. another, like, another like, experience like, where I had no idea what I was working on. Do you guys say Zidane or Zidane? See, it's half and half, so... Zidane Zidane, same, same guy. The guy from Final Fantasy IX. Um, so when I got called in to play that, I, I had no idea that I was working on a Final Fantasy game. And like, when they told me what it was, I started to like, fanboy. And I had to like, contain it, because I was with the Square Enix execs, and I was like, oh, Final Fantasy, this is so awesome. Um, so, uh, I haven't got, uh, I have a PS3, and I have Tales of Grace's F, and I'm not that far, because there's like 120 hours of gameplay on that game. It's so good. I know, it's so good. And Asbel is such a great character. Like, my memory of recording Tales of Grace's F are so, like, happy. It was such a good time in my life. Like, it recorded over four months. I had more lines in that game than I ever had as any other character. I had 3,600 lines. Yeah, seriously, like, like no joke. Um, and, and all those skits, so as you're playing this game, the characters like have these little asides about like different things that are happening, and we played out all of those skits throughout the game, 120 hours of gameplay, and Asbel's a talker. 
So um, it was a lot of talking, and the, the director was Wendy Lee, um, who's so incredible to work with. So that summer, I spent about two and a half months working with Wendy Lee as Asbel. Then I got married, I went on my honeymoon, then I came back and got to play Asbel again. So it's just like such good memories working on that game. Um, but do I play the game? So I've played a little bit of Tales of Graces. Since then, there's a lot of games I really want to play. Actually, Final Fantasy IX is sitting there ready to be played, but I haven't done it yet, because I know I'm going to get obsessed with it, and that's all I'm going to do. So if there's ever a moment where you don't hear me working at all, and I just disappear off the face of the earth, I'm gaming. I really want to play Grand Default because that is so much like nostalgia in my childhood. Like it's so awesome to be a part of a game like that. And Bravely Second just came out, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, which check that out. It's really awesome. Um, they gave us a little more freedom with the, the voice acting this time. Uh, like we weren't as constrained by time. So they let us kind of experiment with the lines and feel the characters a little more. And it was really fun recording. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, but I want to play those games, and I'm not buying a handheld, so I can't play those games. Eventually I will. The struggle is real, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it, it, I'm creating a character that's a mashup of all my characters, or? So, what would be my magical boy name? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, Cat Noir is pretty much a magical boy as it is. <laughs> Yes, he totally is. Wow, what would be my magical boy name? I don't know. I think I need to become a magical boy and then you get named in the process. <laughs> like it just happens organically. <laughs> Anyone have a good magical boy name? Shout it out if you do. I think it's tough. Derek. Derek. <laughs> Yes. That'll come out of nowhere, so... Just straight up, Derek. Derek. No last name. Derek. 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 Magical boy. Yes. Love it. Um, yes. So I'm a huge fan of Danganronpa. Awesome. And, and as somebody who absolutely loved the English voice act acting, I just want to say, how did it feel to voice such a completely normal person in a killing game? <laughs> um, actually, it was really fun. Like, uh, and, and by normal person, I assume you're referring to Nagy. Yes. Not Nagy. Yep. Because <laughs> I, I voiced both of them, and uh, it, they're like polar opposites, which is so awesome to be able to do that. Um, in the first game, it was really cool because I was describing all the different, like, clues as killings were happening. Okay, who's not? Some people are probably going like, what is he talking about? Who's playing Dom and Ropa? I've seen the last play on the anime. Awesome. awesome. Okay, so tell me if I get this right. Basically, a bunch of super kids are trapped in a school by a psychotic mechanical bear. <laughs> And the bear tells them, you need to kill another student, or you're going to be trapped in here, and if you can kill a student and get away with it, you can go free. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Pretty much. Okay, cool. So, there were all of these killings that were happening, and my character described all the clues and, and what he was seeing, and it was really funny. It was like I was watching a movie in my head, because when you go in to record these things, you've never seen the script before. So I had no idea who was going to die next, why they died, who killed them. Like, I was discovering all these things as I was perform performing it. And when you're a character like that, you really get the story because every single aspect of it, I went through all those routes. So it was so fun. It was like I was watching a movie or playing the game as I was working. So <laughs> great experience. And I heard there's going to be more. Yes. Oh, okay. Season three, another anime. Wait, wait. another anime and another game. Another anime and, another game. and I hope they bring my characters back. 
Yeah. Okay. If voice actors seem clueless, it's because we are. <laughs> they don't tell us anything on purpose. Uh, because we talk for a living and we'll probably say the wrong thing. So if uh, we just don't know anything, we can't say the wrong thing. Um, so I usually get my like information about what's going to come out from the internet, from like Facebook and Twitter, from Minecraft to that Cadet Corn. Yeah, thanks for telling me what stuff is coming out. Um, so that's why we're totally. Confused. How does it feel to like? How does it feel to flip from somebody like Makoto to flip from somebody as crazy as Nagito? It was really fun. Um, when I recorded Nagito, I felt like I was the Joker. Like that's kind of what was going through my mind. Um, and he comes back in the in the game after. There's less Nagi and more Nagito in the Ultimate Despair Girls. Yeah, Ultimate Despair Girls. Yeah, and that was really fun. I got to do some stuff to picture of him, like in the chains. What, they call him slave in that one. Servant. Yeah, he calls him servant. There we go. I had a girl uh, come up to me right as that was announced in that particular cosplay. Um, <laughs> And she's like, how does it feel to play garbage? <laughs> and I'm like, fantastic! <laughs> All right, we'll keep going over. Back there, yeah. Uh, so you're talking about stories, so I want to know, what is your favorite story? You know, whether in a game, a movie, book, what do you think is the most enjo enjoyable story you've seen? <laughs> wow, like just in general? Yeah. Um, like, my favorite thing to like, watch? Yeah, that works. Like when I'm when I'm not working, or my favorite thing that I particularly worked on. Anything. Um, I really like South Park and Family Guy. Yeah. Yeah. I watch a lot of that. Um, I love SpongeBob. Um, I watch a lot of like light-hearted, funny cartoons. Um, I'm pretty obsessed with like comedy. Um, some, they're, they are making a SpongeBob musical? Yes, we have Yes, please. That sounds amazing. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I, I love it. Okay, keep going over. Up, way up in the back. And then work forward in this line. So, like, boom, I can't tell what you're cosplaying as. You look kind of like Statue of Liberty from here. Uh, yes. Um, Okay, so I actually had a question about Henry from Fire. Sure. Earth. So there's been a lot of debate in the fandom about whether his happiness is genuine or if it's sort of masking like emotional trauma, and I kind of want to know what you thought as someone who voices the character. I mean, I didn't spend that much time with Henry because not all his lines were performed. I wish that we would have performed all the conversations. Actually, um, the last channel I, I did perform, uh, and it was it was something about uh, uh, you look beautiful. We should go on a date sometime. Looting graves, um, and I think he's genuine when he says that. I don't think that he's hiding anything. I think he really would love going on a date and looting graves. <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of how I performed it. Like he was really excited about. Blood and death and wanting to die and it's just like his obsession. I don't know. What do you do? You guys feel that way too? Is he hiding something deeper? Depends on which version he's like. He's a lot of what? Okay. He's a little messed up. I mean, you would have to be a little messed up to be that happy about those things. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's messed up to the point that he is genuinely happy about that stuff. Uh, okay, keep working for it. So, yes. Uh, Tad, one, one of you go first. Okay, I'll go then first. The other one, yeah. Out of all the characters you've voiced, who was your favorite to voice? Oh. Okay. Oh. That, that's what I say every time I hear this question. Uh, I'm going to cop out. I, I can't pick one. Um, I, that's okay. It's so difficult to get uh, these types of roles. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful that I, I've been able to work on such amazing projects. So I can't narrow it down to one. Like how can I choose between all this awesome stuff that I've worked on? Um, also, 
Those characters exist inside my head, and if I pick the wrong one, another one will probably murder me. <laughs> so to avoid being murdered up on stage, all of that. <laughs> all right, moving forward, yeah. Um, it's a question because I adore Attack of Titans, of course, yes. Aaron Yeager. Awesome. But this is a serious question that I get from a lot of fans. Is the ship between Eren X Viva and Eren X Mikasan? Which one of these ships do you choose, personally, since you're the voice actor of Eren? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's such a difficult spot. <laughs> I know, right? Because I'm like the in between. Because, I mean, here's the problem. If I don't pick Mikasa, Trina Nishimura will punch me in real life. <laughs> um, so I don't know. That's so tough. Okay, let's just let's just pull the ask the audience. I get one. Um, I'll just do it a bunch of times. I can do it as many times as I want to. Um, uh, Aaron X Levi, raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron X. Mikasa, raise your hand. We're about 50-50 here. How can you choose? How about all three? So, sorry, I don't have a good answer. All three. I agree. I agree. It's sometimes hard for me to choose. What was that? I have to agree, because sometimes it's hard to choose which ship to ship. There are just so many ships that need to sit <laughs> Ship them all. Ship them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you answer so my questions. Uh, yeah, right here. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got two. Uh, Go for it. Let's see. One is, what is the most challenging thing you've done acting wise? As okay. Play? Um, I think uh, my most challenging moments were the screams, like the intensity of the screams in Sword Art Online and Attack on Titan. Because, um, I mean, those characters just speak and scream. Like, they don't have inside voices. <laughs> yeah, it is. Especially it is true. in these shows. Um, in Sword Art, you would say the last 15 minutes of every session just to scream. <laughs> because if I did those screams, I couldn't speak like he did. Um, yeah, um, you go through a lot of water in those sessions. Um, and I said, who's your last Okay, I might repeat some stuff that I said in the last panel. Um, so, uh, and working on Attack on Titan, uh, Mike McFarlane, the director, didn't want things to sound clean. So normally you take a big sip of water and you clear your mouth out, so your takes sound uh, nice and clear. But for Attack on Titan, he wanted things to sound really disgusting and nasty. So, on top of that, you have this intense scream, and then you have, like, spit in your mouth, and you want to make it gravelly and just gross. He literally wanted it to sound like my vocal cords were tearing, which they were. Um, so, that was really challenging. And, and with both those shows, I watched both of those shows before I went in to record. That's usually not what you're able to do. Um, usually you go in and you don't know what you're going to record that day. So um, I, I was really fortunate that I knew I'm going to scream really, really loud. Um, I think my training for those kind of screams um, was pretty extensive, though. I taught martial arts for years and years, so I would go days just yelling at kids. Um, and that, you know, conditioned my growth for screaming in the booth. Um, okay. A lot popped up. So we'll go one, two, three, four, and then I'll work my way back, okay? So. Oh, you had a second question. Sorry. Time out. Then you're in. The second question was How long have you done that marshmallow trick with Melody and. Oh my because god. You, because you've done it, I heard in the video you've done it for a long time. You're able to do it. Um, I've played Chubby Buddy before, um, so I, I joined my friends uh, Erica Lindbeck and Mella Lee on their show Lindbeck and Lee, and um, they're just like, hey, come on my show, I'm like, sweet, let's do it, um, so I uh, showed up, and they're like, guess what, today you're shoving marshmallows in your mouth, and I'm like, sweet, let's do it, so they bring out this giant, like, pyramid of marshmallows, 
and we played Chubby Bunny. Um, so I um, I only had one wisdom tooth, and uh, so I got lucky. But I also had an impacted molar, which they had to remove. So like this side, there's kind of like no this side, there's kind of like a gap. Boop, marshmallow sticks right there, so I can fit a couple in there. Um, so that gives me a little leg up on those girls. Um, by the way, I won. Um, and then, when I was done, I spit all the marshmallows out, and it was like this big handful, just like, Ugh! and then I just set it on the table. And you should see that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. Very fast. Um, I'd probably be one of the people that gets hit with a boulder before they know what's happening. Um, I wouldn't get hit by a titan. I'd just be like, what? <laughs> uh, ladybug. Um, there are a lot of really good moments in that show. Uh, who's seen Miraculous Lady? Oh, hell yeah, I've seen it. Awesome. Um, so I play a character named Adrian, aka Cat Noir. Yes. Um, such an awesome superhero who has terrible cat puns. Um, I think just the like overall like like if you put all the cat puns together, like those are my favorite moments. <laughs> Um, it's just really fun being a superhero, like playing that, and also doing the like teenage version of him, who's you know still a com like a confident high schooler, but then he goes into like ultra confident cocky cat noir mode, um, aka Maso Mikita in that world. Um, so it's really fun to play that kind of character. Um, so it's hard to pick one specific moment. I think just all of the terrible cat puns and pun 